that are not already. So how does one beat SYF? It's a good question. No one's been able to figure that out. Sita and Hunter are the two uh, best Terrans in the region at the moment. Um, and it's just even some of the little things. Like I was watching some of their games before and they've just got the nicest SimCity at the third base in the world. And it seems like such a small thing, but it can win you games. But uh, enough of that. Let's introduce our players, starting with in the top right-hand corner here in the blue trunks. Playing for team, downfall. This is yours. It's actually Mine? his, but uh, yeah, I was gonna or say. yours. Yeah. And the bottom left here, representing some spiciness. Is he muy caliente? I'm not too sure. In the bottom left of Cerulean Fall, it is Seether. Who are Scyther. I would say, or Scyther. Oh, Scyther, isn't it? Because he, he actually pronounced it the way that he wants to pronounce it. I really should uh, get on board with that. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna, no. I'm not going to go full Atosis here and be like, no, he's called Hydra. It's like, you know, the player's trying to tell him that, no, I'm actually Idra. And he just doesn't listen. I don't want to be one of those guys. Yeah, well, there's always the Artosis pylon, so he's got something to fall back on. That is he true. He doesn't like it. I was actually watching the uh, I was watching the pylon show the other day, and I saw that he was complaining about the the hit points of the assimilator and how the how he thinks the pylon should be buffed with more hit points. And <laughs> I thought that it was pretty. I thought it was pre pretty hilarious that the guy, the guy that um, that is known for Artosis pylon wants the hit points of the pylon buffed. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. <laughs> anyway. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's a good show. I love it. Uh, we got a Reaper fast expand here from Seether. Oh, Scyther. Oh, I gotta get used to that. Um, and even though this kid does love playing other games, he's got plenty of plenty of hours in the Dota. We've been talking about it a little bit. Every every time the SYF guys get together, they they, they lane together and they ladder together, these guys. They, they are a close-knit crew. But for some reason, even though even though they're just they're not grinding StarCraft all the time, they just still seem so hard to beat. They're impossible to beat in this tournament. I mean, all, yeah. all three seasons, right? Uh, yeah, five and so, out, it's like yeah, <laughs> too good, just too good. Yours going for that third base around two and a half minutes. The uh, Reaper is, is not going to be able to go there and, and delay that whatsoever. Reaper is just going to work on some of these links, but decent micros so far from yours. Yeah, uh, Reaper's taking a fair bit of damage. Actually can't yeah. dive into the main safely anymore, so has to get out of there. That's something I wish I had the patience for because I dive all the time. Every time I see a Reaper die to slow links, I'm like, well, this is a, it's a Maynard stream. And no. then all of the viewers are just holding up the scorecards. It's like 9.5, 9.5, 9.5. Good dives. <laughs> yeah. Solid dives, very little splash. <laughs> uh, yeah, great penetration. Um, so we're having the reactor go down here on the factory. All pretty regular stuff here. Starport and Tech Lab on that barracks, but it looks of things. So you can get a bit of map control with those Hellions. Zerg is just running up on that third. Yours has been the kind of player that would go for something like a Baneling Bust or Roach Knight or something like that. Like he has been very aggressive and memey in the past. Ling Drop was one of his favorites, um, but uh, is playing a very solid macro game so far. Just pretty regular three base Zerg. Yeah, nothing's really changed with yours' opening before and after the patch. It's exactly what we would have expected. Now the creep spread change will make a difference to how quickly that can get across the map. And it also makes a difference to when Terran's harass. Oh, hold that thought. Look at the fusion core. I, We're going to see I, some ranged liberator memes. I or actually maybe a don't. BC. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think this is for ranged liberator's death. I think this is for the battle yeah. cruiser. I don't know if you've noticed, but the battle cruiser actually battles and cruises at the same time now. It's not bad, is it? Uh, all right. So what, what does yours do? Is he going to be able to get a scout? No, he's not. That oh. Overlord is going to get picked up <laughs> straight away. That's fake stim. That's fake stim. Here we go! <laughs> oh, hold me. Oh, baby. This is you know what I good. love about tonight? People have been just showing off the new patch, man. We got Tempest from Probe. We had some of those... Uh, oh, hang on. What do, what do we have? Um, who else was memeing? Oh, jeez, I've forgotten already. It was like two two of the two times we saw that new patch. The Colossi coming down. That was the, the, the new Colossi I've been showing. There's that BC there from Seether. We've seen the new Transfuse. We've That's seen... That's a new Transfusion. 
Yeah, and, and now we're seeing the battle cruises as well. Does need to be careful once the key resilience alive. Ooh, yeah, still alive. Damn, recall. they are covered in butter. Okay. All right, so we've got the lair coming up now. The Baneling Nest. Uh, if yours knew what was coming his way, he would certainly not be going for Banelings. Uh, it, it want maybe some more queens, maybe a couple more spores. And I think that Hydras will probably be the choice, although Corruptors would probably be more effective, but they're more expensive. It's harder to get there. Yeah. Um, it's excellent it's, control here from Seeker too. Because of how the battle the battle cruiser works, and I've seen this actually happen um, earlier today, uh, you just you just you can actually just tactical jump it in between the natural and the main. There's like a little pocket of dead air there, and you can just float around, man. Uh, he's actually going for the very back of the main base here. There it is. I got you, Insano. That's cheeky. All right, here we go. How much damage can he do? He's just railing on some of these drones, and it can attack while it moves. It battles oh. while cruises. How long have we, we been waiting for a change like this? The battle cruiser just, it's got its, its swag. It's swagger on around this main base. That's right. The queens and are coming up, but it's still shooting. It's still getting the headshots, man. That's right. It's scooting and shooting, and all he's doing is just trying to buy time for that tactical jump to come back so he can send it home and repair again. Yours instantly, though, reacts with that spire, which I think is a good move here. And he's going to try and punish Seether for battle cruises. He's not just making one, he's making a second one as well. So, considering Seether is putting a fair bit of money into this harassment, bam, laser beams. One of those queens goes down. Oh, and the battle yeah. cruiser is going to survive. See ya. Yeah. Six kills, forcing out a bunch more spores. So, that's kind of indirect damage as well. Bio is going to be the transition here. So, you're not going to see any crazy sky mech builds or mech transitions. It is going to be pretty standard stuff, but uh, with a couple of battle cruisers to keep doing some harassment damage. Uh, yours is doing a decent job here with the drone count. He's up to 64 against the 56 of Seetha, so his economy is not in shambles. Mm. And he's starting his upgrades as well, roughly even putting there against the tearing. Cleans up a couple of Hellions, which is nice. Yeah, now, I actually think that yours is doing a very good job at punishing Seetha for these memes. Uh, the, the spire is quite nice, and there's those corruptors on the way as well. Uh, I mean, it's just the one at the moment. Um, yeah, unfortunately, supply the Aussie supply block. Yeah, a few corruptors would be nice. I think that he needs to find a way to try and do some damage back to see to the. Choo! Another dead queen. I actually like the teleport location, like I mentioned, between the natural and the main, and you just float between the two. The battle cruiser doesn't lock onto that spore crawler automatically, it actually loves drones. So it'll continuously attack those instead, which makes harassing a lot, uh, very, very easy. You just scoot it around like a phoenix. That uh, sounds very, like very great slow, quality 400 of life. Phoenix. Didn't expect to see that. All right, so it's there's another one. The one from earlier is harassing the third base. They clean up the corruptor. So these battle cruisers have been extremely cost-effective. Eleven, uh, twelve, almost thirteen drone kills so far, and Seeker. You know, up 20 supply and adding the armory on he's going to be able to transition into 2-2 two, two. he can go into mines if he wants to the new upgrade will, will permanently cloak them and he just scoots on out of there teleports yep, away uh, tactical jump back at home can repair that bad boy for later um just there in the natural there we go and Sano's a little jet lag guys you'll have to forgive him it's fine normally he's perfection but that's okay you can't expect him to be 100 percent all the time um, we have a big push here from Seeda with a Bioforce, and that's very, very good against these Corruptors, I think you'll agree. But the Corruptors do have a bit of an opening here. There's not a ton of turret coverage for Seeda, so they could actually Caustic Spray some of his production, or potentially even a CC, if they want to dive in. It looks like they're going to do that to the main. Uh, at the moment, he does have to look at this Bio hitting on that creep before Bailing Speed's done. Bailing's actually connecting very nicely there. Yeah, a bit of an uncharacteristically uh, poor move there from Seeda. <laughs> Oh, here we go. The caustic spray. Oh, he needs to get a repair. And oh, he does. Oh, oh, that's I think though. that's easy. He's actually going to fall. Oh. <laughs> Dude, it goes down. Now, Seether, he has to rebuild that base. Yours is up on four hatcheries. Double CC goes down. Seether now. He's going to fall reasonably behind in the army supply. No, I, yeah, I, I was mentioning a bit before, but I just think that yours is doing a really good job at at, at seeing see the go for these battle cruiser memes and just being like, "All right, kid, 
you're not going to embarrass me in front of 150 people. All right, all my friends are watching right now. I'm not going to lose to this. No one loses to Battle Cruisers, okay? I know they're better now. I'll be fine. This is Seether, by the way. If, if if this guy can 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 make memes and dreams happen, he's he's got the hands to do it. He's so skilled. I have to see what the slow Banelings can do. Uh, Banelings, we just finished up though. There's some critical hooks are done. Yours just buying himself some time, cleaning up some of the reinforcing units. Seether turns around. Uh, Battle crews are going into the main, so that'll be able to take out the Queen. Would even go for some Yamatos, maybe on one of the Spore Crawlers or just something. And it looks like the Corruptors are coming up. He does have the tactical jump off cooldown. And the I... Muters will get one of them picked off. Damn. The scoot and shoots here from this Battlecruiser have been pretty effective. Uh, that Battlecruiser is on 16 kills. Uh, 24 drones have died this game thanks to the Hellions and the Battlecruisers combined. But uh, it's yours. Black, Black's death has brought up a couple times. He's already got a pretty beastly economy. He's got as many drones as he wants. And it's about that time where he starts to power towards Tier 3. I mean, see, there's been in Tier 3 since the early game. But um, yours is on his way there at a very healthy pace. 2-2 two, two about to be done for the Ling Bane. And that's very powerful against this bio here. Um, see, there's 2-2 two, two as well. But, you know, he hasn't got that 3-3 three, three just started. Uh, just starts it now, as I say that. Oh, he's got to be careful, though. Those are some scary looking marines. Cerulean 4 has some annoying map architecture where the meters can kind of just dart around the back and just go back and forth. Kind of like how the battle cruisers were abusing him. He can use the same architecture against the Terran. Like, uh, yeah. so, uh, that dead space is running out a little bit here. Uh oh, uh, SpaghettiOs. Oh, God, that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, the Corruptors is like, well, I mean, I guess. I guess we got to get shot at too. There's no room for us either. Hey, another new patch thing's going down. Nice. Caesar is getting drilling claws, which means that his widow mines, once they burrow and shoot, are going to be cloaked. I'm so happy. I almost wept when I saw that change. And now you just wet. Big changes. It's good. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful quality of life change. I also like the you can't lift up the barracks that's researching stim. Another nice change as well, because God knows I've lost games because of that before. Yeah, it's a bit of give and take though. Now that the SCVs are so targetable, that I is keep true. clicking on the SCV when I'm trying to select my production. Annoying. <laughs> all right, Zetha coming up. He's got to push the fourth. He's in a decent position. He's cleaned up all the creep as well. Now yours, he's scratching his head. He's like. Mm. Oh, my muters and my corruptors are around that side. Oh, he cleans up some of the units on the low ground, but yours, oh, I'm just not sure he really knows what he's doing with this fight. It's a lot of Terran still back at home. He's, he's kind of sacrificing his fourth base. Mm, these Widowmines are actually very tough for yours to deal with here. He's got primarily Banelings back at home, and these muters are not too great against Widowmines either. Now, there's not that many, so maybe you can soak up some shots and get on top of that tank line. That's what it's going to, it's going to be up to the muters now to try and get on the top of those tanks and kill them. Battlecruiser teleporting around the place, going towards the natural. Meanwhile, Yor's rolling in here with all of his Banelings, and he does actually succeed in mopping up Cedar's attack here on the high ground off creep. The hatchery is still alive. But there's a run by here of Bio, some Marines and a Marauder as well. And that looks like it's a dead hatchery. That's a dead hatchery. I think he should actually kill that fourth and remake it. Ooh, loses the BC. Oh, I was going to say, if he didn't lose the BC, um, he, he could just teleport that over to that weakened fourth base and Yamato it down. But never mind, as you were. <laughs> Couple you know, CCs even... now going down. Seath is seriously maxed out. He's got great upgrades, making five mines at a time. His arm is scary. Yeah, certainly. Oh, nice catch of these muters, getting that CC as it floats on over. And Caustic spray that before the, the, before the turrets get done as well. Completely mops up this base, eliminates 12 Urkas from Cedar's economy as well. Oh, he's going to try and stick around. No, he doesn't want to lose his air army again here. Surprised we haven't seen a Great Aspire from uh, from yours yet. He's going to go down the Ultra Path here. I guess he has got the upgrades for it. 3-3 is on the way. Yeah, I really don't like the choice to go into Ultras here. I, I think the Great Aspire would be much better. Considering the, the position that Theron is at in this game, 
even the mines and the cloaked mines will be able to do very nice things against ultras. He's going to come in and clean up the, the mines. He, he might be able to make things awkward for Sita to defend that base, but here's a counterattack. Also, just out of the ooh, corner of my ooh, eye, ooh. I thought that was a mana mule, but uh, no, it was actually him dealing with the mineral attack. Okay. Was. He's doing his best Jazz Baz impression as he tries very hard to lose all of his muters. <laughs> oh, the Ultra Cavern. Here. Oh, no. The Ultra Cavern. No Ultras have been made yet. So that's actually just um, completely snap that tech out of the game if he targets it down. He's not target firing, though. Yours cleans up the drop. Damn. This is scrappy. Isn't it? Both players are pretty beaten, battered, and bruised here. Yours with a bit of a mineral bank. Sealy with a bit of a gas bank. No real way to spend it. Not really throwing it into Ravens or anything at this point. It wouldn't be a terrible idea to get a couple of those Armor Seeker missiles out, but, um... I mean, they don't—they do zero damage now, but it's not about the damage. They still deny that, or, or, you know, take away a bit of armor from a lot of units, making things very easy for a Stimbola Bio to engage. And, and finally uh, gonna see some ghosts coming up as well. Oh, yeah. This is the point of the game where things can get real crazy real quick. Couple ghost academies, maybe some nukes later on. Depends how late it goes. Oh, another and catch. And yours needs to start doing more of this. You know, just taking out a base here, bit of production there. Keep his units alive, though. If it loses a flock of meters like this, it's going to be a logo. And the ultras are out. I'm just not sure how effective they're going to be in the fight. Um, especially if it does go off creep. There is a the new ultra upgrade, but I don't think we've seen it. Some meters going down. No, he hasn't got it yet. He's gotten Chitinous, which I think is more important, honestly, because he, he's yeah. being defensive. He's waiting on creep. I think the there that is the new Ultra That's upgrade being one. made right now there. The, the, that Ultra gets a lot more speed off creep now, which is something we're going to see a little bit. If yours manages to clean this up and still have Ultras at the end is the big question here. I think he might be able to. He's just being very patient. He's got 3-3. Three, three, he's got Chitinous. What's he waiting for? Here he goes. Yeah, lots of families coming through, getting some decent connections. The Widow Mines didn't do too much damage. But, oh, there's actually a, a decent chunk of bio around the right-hand side there. A couple mines still left over. And yours, he's attacking off creep, but he might be getting a little bit too far forward for his own good. The bio can just kite all of these units. Um, yeah, they're a fair bit quicker now. Those Ultras got up. their skating shoes on, but... The bio has still damaged them so heavily. Jeez, they're fast. Holy shit. I haven't seen it before. But they are damaged, wow. and I think that they're going to die. I'll take it all back. These are way better than broods. Yeah. Like, ju just that small buff to their movement speed. And uh, in the latest patch, too, they, they made that upgrade quite a bit faster, so that came up online very quickly. The mutas in the sky can still do a, a serious amount of damage. The I'm ultras can start to cleave all of these SCVs, but it looks like he doesn't want to. Oh, oh, the Widow Mines! No, 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 yours, 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 no! Okay, the Widow Mines aren't getting off their charge yet, so the Air Army is still alive, but the Bio is actually starting to hold. The Planetary lives! See, he continues to hold on here. Has 45 workers at the moment, so his economy isn't amazing. But keeping these bases alive means he gets to stay alive in this game. His production is still spinning. His bank isn't too bad either. And his army supply, very similar to the Zergs here. Upgrades nearly maxed out as well. <laughs> I thought that was going to go into the links. Yeah, so I was holding right. my breath. All right. Yours doing a great job now, um, continually denying this base. If that was up and if that was a planetary and mining for the last couple of minutes like he wanted, um, I, I think that this game would look very different. Seether would be up in supply, but yours has done a very nice job now to hold on. I think he needs to start looking for another base. Maybe getting some more creep spread around the left and right sides of the map would be great as well mm -hmm. um and how many how many medivacs does Seether have he, he's got six up on the field he doesn't have any no, ghosts I think yours is now looking like he's got a better army composition Seether's not done very well transitioning his army into the late game yeah without ghosts it's been really tough to see that but he hasn't been able to secure the extra gas mining like these these planetaries have no gas being taken at them which is i think is a big mistake to see there is this bank needs to be there to be able to make those ghosts happen which um i agree with you are very very important uh, against this kind of army comp where the ultras are the major threat oh nice liberator here no spore queen on position and the liberator actually has a new graphic on it as well for uh um 
advanced ballistics. I, I brain farted on the upgrade there, but shoots a pew pew laser beam ball now. Yeah, it looks pretty sick. Um, all right, so he's got the range. He's starting to put on those ghosts. One now in production. Yeah, he's starting to get those extra gases too. So Sifa can now defend. He's got a great ring of sensor towers. He'll be going for a few drops. This could go real late. I mean, we could see a 40-minute game here. Um, yeah. And, and this, this could get into one of those, those stages where the map gets mined out. Um, yours wants to uh, get that creep spread going, like I was talking about before. So he's got a lot of creep tumors now around the right-hand side. And if he is proactive with his queens, he can uh, make it very challenging for Seether to push anywhere. So we'll see more drops um, and eventually some big pushes like this one. Oh, this push from Seether is poised to do a whole lot of damage here. His, his Liberator count is high, the Widow Mine count is high as well. That laser on their heads, meaning that they actually have that Drilling Claws upgrade. A lot more graphic indicators here for these upgrades here since this patch hit. Turret's damaging a fair bit of the air army of yours. He's doing the tried old true tactic of just flying that air units into Seether's infrastructure while Seether's out of position. But Seether this time has a bit more in position to be able to fight back here. He's pulling his whole army home, but he has cancelled the hatchery in the top left. He's killed one in the far right as well. So the move out did actually get him some purchase. This is actually great for yours. Taking yeah, out wow. those ghosts and getting up on the production, forcing Seether to go back home. Seether did a couple nice things there with that drop. Denied a bit more economy from yours. And you see that... I think one of the issues here is Seether's gas bank is just awful. It's non-existent. He's got 3,000 minerals in the bank, right? Um, whereas yours, he doesn't really have a bank, but it's still reasonably even. He's adding on extra upgrades at the Spire level. Um, if he can prevent the Terran from getting another base and secure a couple more of his own, he's still in a great spot. But I, I think that yours needs to start seriously. Oh, that's a big Ooh. hit. He needs to Doesn't seriously me, start considering um, a couple more tech options. And I'd love to start seeing some Vipers in the mix as well. See, there is mining more gas than yours at the moment, and gas is actually incredibly important to both players. Both players have actually got a relatively low bank, so a bad trade for either player could actually be potentially game-ending. Um, see, there has one Widow Mine here, which potentially could have gotten some of those banelings there, but didn't barrel it in time. These meters ready to catch that medevac, and ain't going nowhere. See ya. See ya. At plus three attack meters, man. Plus three attack corruptors, yeah. too. Yeah, like you say, one bad trade at this point would spell the end of the game. Not like being a, a kid and just trading away like a shiny boss or a Pokemon card for something terrible. You just don't want to do it. But, right. but sometimes but, you, you're just not in control of yourself. That's all right. Thankfully, the value of stuff is literally spelled out in front of you in, Star in StarCraft 2, and it's not like Pokemon cards when you're eight years old, where you don't know that your shiny whatever card is worth 200 bucks. You just salty. want that Charizard so bad. Yeah. All right, here we go. Liberators, great positioning here. <laughs> I'm not sure if yours can defend this base, but he's gonna try. Snipes All the snipes! The Muters, massive snipes, but uh, the Ultras are cleaning up everything on the ground. I, I think that snipes would have been better placed on the Ultras at first. Zetha is cleaning some stuff up, but the Overseers, the Muters, the Ultras coming through now. Uh, and yours might be overextending, but he's done a lot yeah. of damage. He certainly has, and he's getting that army supply back up there, though, using that mineral bank to get a big flood of lings out. And I feel like when you're doing that, at this point in the game, it feels like a lot of panic to get this many lings out. Like, ooh, I need to make something. Like, I need an army. I've lost my army. I need to make something right now. And if Seether is patient here with this army, can deal with the counterattack, the counter harassment here, this air army, I feel like the new army of Seether is going to be a little bit stronger. Actually, it's it, it's not it's not silly for Seether to use that mineral bank to make a lot more marines right now. But I'm sure that he's still afraid of ultras and, and really trying to avoid marine production. But marines are actually quite good against what yours has at the moment. Yeah, so are the liberators. If he just doesn't siege them up, he'll be great. He needs to keep watching the muter count. Muter count's now up to 25. And it's basically mutaling at 24 minutes. And it, yeah. part of that is because... Yours just hasn't had the extra bases and the extra income. Uh, there was also some Liberator harass, a couple of drones going down. And yours just always up in the Terran's favorite. face. 
Um, you don't really want a cyclone at this point in the game, as buffed as they have been. Uh, but we can see that see the is we just saw a big round of marines in that production tab earlier as well. He's, he's identified that there is going very ling heavy. That maybe yours as gas bank is not as good as he thought it was. So he's got to get a few more marines out. Still making plenty of liberators. So when the ultras do show up, he can handle them. And also you can unseize those liberators and actually engage the air army if they're high enough in count. Those uh, liberators. One thing that see that has been missing here, and it's a lot of it has to do with this gas bank and the fact that he hasn't been able to spend it on everything that he wants at once, is he hasn't been getting air upgrades all game long. He has armor for them, but the attack upgrades are not super great. Yeah, that, that makes a massive difference, actually, when Liberators are going up against the Muters. But when you've got enough Liberators, it doesn't matter. Like, at some point, the damage is just AoE, kills everything. Uh, I would love for him to start getting an upgrade, um, but he is a little bit low on the gas. So, Cyclone, that was just a mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake. No one wanted it. His parents just told him straight up, and he went off, killed the hatchery, and that was that. Yeah. It's uh, when I'll, you go I'll to make, make a proud, Liberator, Dad. and uh, uh, the Liberator comes out of Cyclone. Just awful. <laughs> well, I see there's at that point of the game where you're starting to bit of, put a bit of resources into nukes here, and that is something that I guess yours probably isn't expecting at this point, because we haven't seen too many spore crawlers or anything, and he's trying to transfuse that hatchery. It only gets 75 a pop straight up, but it does have that regeneration, and as it stands, it is good enough to keep this hatchery alive against those Marines. Love to see the nukes in production. And he is, he, he's listening. He's going for the ship weapon upgrade. Drops again up here. Uh, I, I feel like yours at some stage might have been better off going into um, infestors or something so he can lock down these bases, but does push forward. He's going to be able to pick up that. Oh, the ghost. Oh my dead. God, the ghost. The ghost says nowhere for them to run except back through that little choke that so many of those ghosts are falling. And the Liberator's going down as well. The Banelings are rolling through, Maynard, but there's no vision on the Ghosts. They could have exploded, but they just didn't get the right connections. Zeke is down to 163 supply. Yours is taking a commanding position, getting up onto the production. Zeke yeah. is in a lot of trouble. This is generally checkmate. When you get on top of the Terran's production, that is their lifeblood. That is their spine, and he's ripping out of his body right now. I'm getting graphic again. But this is what it is. He's on top of him and he can't produce units anymore. See, there's desperately trying to get whatever he can together. But it's not going to be enough to stop yours. He's dropping on the other side of the map, trying to get whatever damage he can get done. But it turned out that this switch back into tier 2 and tier 1, getting a lot of lings and getting a lot of muters, has actually done the deed done the deed here for him. Is He's just up 60 army supply. His mutalists don't really have an answer anymore as these liberators die. The widow mines have died. How does he stop these muters? Yeah, he doesn't. Um, not really a whole lot that he can do, I think, at, at this point. All of the Lings and the Banelings are coming in. He's got vision on the Ghosts. All the Ghosts are falling. Everything is just falling to pieces. See the oh. taps out. GG. Yours did it. 28 minutes. What an epic game. Well done. Congratulations to yours as he puts his team uh, in a enviable position against SYF, reigning champions. Oh, I'm getting a little bit wiggly and jiggly in my chair, man. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, all right, downfall. I see it. I I'm smelling what you're stepping in. I'm, I'm, I'll eat what you're cooking here. This is, this is mm -hmm. good. All right, so we're starting things off with downfall, taking out the crown jewel of SYF here. See, there is, I would say, the best player in Australia right now. And they have dispatched him to start things off. I mean, they're not done yet. SYF still have a lot of huge heavyweights for them to take out, and they only need three maps to, to move on through and get another big W here in Season 3. The downfall, Do you hear that, Maynard? They've set it off right. That's the, uh, that's the sound of Sita uninstalling Dota. I did hear that. He's yeah. like, you know what? There was a new patch in Dota, but there's a new patch in StarCraft as well, and if I can't dominate in this game, I'm wasting my time. Bad priorities. Right. Mm -hmm. well, so the next game is going to be Pez versus Voj. We're getting that lobby set up now. Uh, this one will be on Dreamcatcher. So if... Vodge can do it here against Pez, then downfall will be on match point, which mm. would probably just leave me speechless and leave uh, my jaw on the floor. But stranger things have happened. And if Vodge has prepared something here, new patch, new memes, yeah, we could see that, that uh, become a reality. But Pez is a super good Protoss player. He, he certainly is. Uh, I've seen Vodge and Pez play each other before. I'm pretty sure I've, I've seen one of their replays on my stream at some point, but it's, it's, it was pretty close from memory, 
and Vodge mm. actually did end up being the victor in the end. But we'll see where they are right now. It was a long time ago, and the the climate of who's better than who changes quite rapidly in StarCraft. Like all things considered, a month is a lifetime. Um, it can it can really you know change quite a bit. There's a new patch. It's a new it's a new age for StarCraft Two. So I'm pretty keen to see where they're at. Um, we are going to one of the older maps though, heading back to Dreamcatcher. May it rest in peace. It was a good map for me. I had a nice win rate on it. It was all right. I did veto it actually. You did. I mean, ma mainly just uh, because the creator of the map sometimes watched my stream, and so I just um, made it made a <laughs> made a point of vetoing <laughs> it in front of him. It was good times. You just as soon as they show up in your chat, you just F10 and now that your Dreamcatcher game and hit that veto button. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, no Dreamcatcher today. Yeah, just oh, terrible map, terrible, awful. <laughs> Shout out to Timmy if he's watching the stream. <laughs> Oh, yeah, boy. I actually baited him. I, I said um, I, I'd uh, unveto it if, if he donated to the stream. He did. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Savage. In the top left here. He's known as Divine. He's known as a Protoss. He is Pez. And in the bottom right, he's known as Vodge. Uh, this young fellow has been casting a fair bit. Been doing a lot of uh, a lot of stuff on the OSC, on the OSC side of things, and that's awesome to see. I think Vogel and Nancy used to be, uh, cast together quite a bit. We got to meet them both at uh, IEM Sydney last year during the qualifiers that we had for Challenger offline, which is a great time. Hope we get to do that again. Speaking of which. We haven't thanked one of our mate, the, the major sponsor for this tournament. It's part of the reason why we had cool things like that is that McDonald's are on board again. Join us, love. On your Maccas. On your Maccas. Whenever people tell me McDonald's is better in my country, I'm like, does your, does your McDonald's sponsor StarCraft in your hometown? And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, it doesn't mind, so shut up. The McCafe was an Australian invention, I'm pretty sure. And the uh, actually, Create yes, Your Own true. Burger was as well. Yeah, that's actually true. Oh, I mean, I, I made some monstrosities with that create your own burger. <laughs> so much so that they just had to bring it out in like an extra large box. You had some interesting concoctions <laughs> back in the day, that's for sure. The Yoon Burger comes to mind. It's a legend that will never the die. Legendary Yoon Burger. Yeah. Um, I mean, for those watching the stream, it was basically... Uh, McDonald's burger of some description around the time of the Olympics. It, it was, was a, a special run. And um, there was something extra in it. And then there was a massive meat pie with uh, mashed potato and peas wedged in the middle of the burger. It was delicious. All right. The meat pie was not a McDonald's product, but uh, the two became one. And it was, uh, it was, it was greater like than some of its parts. Yeah. Yes. Well, let's talk about StarCraft for a second here, as we're seeing a Stargate opening from Pez, but with a Stalker after the Adept, who's looking to try and snipe down that Overlord, or at least deny scouting for a little bit. You can't really go across the map with a Stalker. You can with an Adept, though, of course. Shades mm -hmm. around causes problems. So, yeah, usually when I see a Stalker early like this from the Protoss, I think, ah, okay, he's just trying to deny a bit of scouting. He really wants to hide what he's doing next from Vodge. Yeah, throwing the shade out. And does get the scout into the main, sees the six slings, doesn't see a whole lot else, but can reasonably deduce that speed will be on the way. Uh, third base coming up from Vodge, perfectly standard stuff so far, bit of creep spread starting. And this just wants to keep that adept alive, keep throwing the shade into the main, just maybe scout and see, you know, how many drones does he have? Does he start a lair? Anything like that. And it just lets him keep his finger on the pulse until the Oracle gets out, and then that's your next scout. And then that can determine uh, which path you take in the game. And it's, it is funny to, to think about how Protoss can transition in the mid game now. And uh, Probe showing it very, very well in the first game of the night with those Tempest. I wonder if Pez has got something similar up his sleeve. Yeah, I'm wondering here. So far, it's actually looking uh, like a like a very old style of going for multiple oracles and going into adepts here. 
I haven't seen a Twilight Council or anything like that from uh, from Pez just yet, so still relying on multiple oracles to get the hurt on the outside of the map. Great copy pasta in chat right now, by the way. Big fan of it, considering it's helping out one of the, the, the greatest sponsors of all time. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Mods. Uh, might let the spam run free. Yeah, I'm surprised Moobot's not all over that. Moobot's out of control. I think we'll actually um, kill Moobot if it gets in the way of that. It's too, it's too beautiful. I'm seeing Roach play here from Vodge as well. Something that, that Zerg's been doing a little bit more these days. Inspired by young Serral, who has been really loving Roaches in CVP, Making them work. Specifically Roach Ravager. Just been a... He just always seems to find an opening. Um, you have to also look at things like the drone count of the Zerg as well, because another thing that Zergs can do is hold that R button. It's like they hold that Z button and stop droning. But at the moment, we're seeing that Vodge is actually economically focused here. Drones catching a handful of, uh, or rather, Oracles catching a handful of drones here. Nine going down so far. He's keeping those Oracles alive too. Yeah, that's super nice. Has doing a great job with those Oracles. His micro is on point tonight. Adding the Twilight Council, couple Robos, Forge. His mid game is going to look very, very nice. Hydrogen, the tech of choice now for Vodge. My main concern is that he's down in drones and there's no fourth base in sight. So if Pez is able to defend the first attack out of Vodge, he's going to have to come up with something tricky. Uh, he needs to find some way to do damage and thin out the, the army can of Pez. Spire goes down. I, I like that choice. I think there's a reaction to his overseer going over the double uh, robotics facility here. And when you see double robotics facility like this, you know that it's Immortals. As I said, the, the Protoss are loving a lot of Immortals here. It's pretty much, it, they're pretty much good against everything. Even though they only do bonus against Armored, when you have a lot of Hydralisks, but the other guy has a lot of Immortals, it really does actually mince through the Hydra lines as well. Spire is a great option. Not only will it start to shut down these Oracles, a lot of Pez's army does not shoot up. So there's a good options that there's good options for those as well. A lot of utility. The Oracles potentially could see the Spire as well as do some harassment here. They see the Hydra Dan, so Pez probably won't be thinking about it. Yeah, decent damage. Loses an Oracle, but probably worth the six drones that he was able to get out of that. Vodge now down around ten workers. And the Spire will come up online, but he actually doesn't have enough minerals to go and really purchase any units with it. He can't put those in afterpay, so he has to actually save up. Just like Mama used to say. Um, Templar Archives coming down. I'm really liking the look of Pez's army, man. Yeah, it's getting solid. Yeah, he's basically got two of every animal. He's, he's, he's nearly sorted the entire tech tree out here. And all that's missing is a robotics bay. And I guess a fleet beacon as well, if you want to get technical, but doesn't really need that just yet. If it gets super, super late game, wouldn't be surprised to see one. Lots of Mew just coming out of here for, for Vodge. More than you generally see. It's not uncommon to see a handful of Mew just come out when they're, you know, having a, to deal with a Warp Prism or a handful of Oracles that have been really annoying all game long. Nice hallucinated Phoenix here from Pez, seeing the Mutalisks. And starting Phoenix production immediately. Yeah, only being able to make one Phoenix at a time, though, that's not ideal, so he... He's going to move out. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that decision. Making a few uh, cannons in his, his main and natural. Um, and going down in the third as well. He's, he's got the shield battery, which can keep some units alive. Uh, but uh, that uh, energy won't last Phoenix. forever. Oopsie daisies. Uh, yeah, I feel like he's, he, he saw the Mutalists, but hasn't actually responded very well here back at home, but he is going for a massive counterattack, which is going to be extremely tough for Vodge to hold without the Mutalists being home for him. Um, you know, the Mutas actually could shut down a lot of this. The Archons, though, going to make things pretty difficult. They're coming home here. Vodge needs to consolidate his forces. He's lost the hatchery already. Even the Sentry with the Guardian Shield makes things a little bit dicey once you start to get this number of Archons. So it's kind of looking a little bit base tradey at this point. Vodge is, is going to dive into the natural, it looks like. Take out that Stalker. Well, he wants to focus down the shield battery first. No, just one-shots it. No chance oh. for that Stalker to regain any of the shields. And this we're is... going straight into base trade territory. I was going to say, this is, this, is what, this is what ZVP used to always be when one guy made Mutalisks. It would always turn into a base trade. And I'm pleased to see that 
the sunrise and sunset full cycle of esports is back again with this base trade from the muta play in full effect Bodge dropping spore crawlers all over the main base also expanding in the bottom corner of the map going for the exodus but Pez is going to hold on to most of his tech here by the looks of things. Oh, that lair's going down. Those immortals are too strong. And even if the stalkers go down here, like the, the muters, they don't really have too much of an answer right now except for Archons. But with some decent spreads, you can actually fight the Archons. So, oh. Bases were getting picked off on the left-hand side. There's no hatchery currently up and standing for Vodge. If he loses that one, he's only got 330 minerals left over. So he's got one more shot at re-establishing a base, Maynard. That's it. One yeah. shot, one opportunity. Can't miss his chance here. Those drones looking for another home. And they have to create it themselves. And we are seeing Pez lock things down at this Nexus here with all those Archons. It's not a, a position that the Muters can come in and engage. They will all die. Uh, see, the main is actually still getting wailed on by something. Oh, no. Oh, this Phoenix. Ah, oh, there's a mortal still. That's, uh... That's a questionable move. Yeah, even he realizes <laughs> it. <laughs> he's yeah. just like, oh, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, he's tugging on these cool. color. He's just like, ooh. Um, and we're seeing hallucinated Phoenixes being utilized by Pez here to just go across the map, seeing where his opponent's trying to make that hatchery. Was that Vodge's going to go to the third slash fourth base location back at home? He's just chilling with those drones at the moment. Yeah. Oopsie daisies. I don't know. Oh, the Archons, the <laughs> Guardian Shields. Vodge gets his hatchery down at kind of a fifth base location. He's going to try and thin uh -oh. out the Archons. Not great uh -oh. micro, though, on the muters. Losing a whole bunch. Oh, no, don't Vodge stack. Oh, up. my GG. Well, then. Not great. <laughs> Uh Love you too, buddy. GG. Well done, Pez. GG and well played. So that was actually this that was actually the series when we were looking at it where I thought on paper I could see downfall getting a map here, but I think SYF wins the other three. Whatever um, you do, don't look at the army value graph. Look at this graph. I'm gonna look at it. <laughs> you, told not, you told me not to. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oof. That's some plummeting stock right there. Mm. Ouch. Ouch. Ouch, indeed. Okay, so uh, after that game, SYF and Downfall have tied up one apiece. So we'll be going to game three, kind of even Stevens here. Either team needs to win two games. And they've got a potential three games remaining tonight. Um, match three is going to be on Fracture. We'll be seeing the players into the lobby pretty soon. It is going to be a TBZ. Um, and it's going to be against, or, or Hut as the Terran versus Satu as the Zerg. And I, I just wanted to say that Satu's performance against Runamark uh, was incredible. Um, and he was very tenacious and he's got excellent late game control and his Infester usage was awesome as well. So, he does have a chance in my mind of uh, pushing Hutt's limits here. I'll take your word for it. I missed, I missed that week, unfortunately. I was still overseas, so mm. I'll take your word for it. To me, Satu was always a good player. He's been Grandmaster for a very, very long time. But I have seen Hutt not only qualify for WCS, but be on stage and win and go deep in WCS tournaments for big money all the time. Whereas I have not seen Satu play a game in... Um, years. So that's where my basis of heart being favored is is here. So I I, I will take a word favored. for it though. No, he's definitely favored, but if it gets into some scrappy late like, game scenario, Satu's he, he's got a chance. He's got the chops. So I think he's got what it takes to um at least make Hut sweat a little. Uh, at least that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, it's uh I'm, I I love TVZ. It's my favorite matchup in the whole game. That's no secret. And when it goes late game, like that Seether, yours game was mwah, bellissimo. Mm. Give that to me all day long. I'll cast that all day, all night. Yeah, TVZ's all right. I mean, it's no, it's no TVT, but um, I'll take it. 
<laughs> I, I, I swear, for like the last six years, I've just been that one guy that's like, yeah, TBT, best matchup. I'll still be ringing that bell. We're coming up on 10 years of StarCraft 2, by the way. Not, not oh too God. long. I have to make it another nine year. years first, but we are certainly on our way. Yeah. Getting old. And the top left. He qualified last season for Montreal. This boy. It is hot. And down here in the bottom right, playing for team Downfall Gaming, it's Satu. I'm checking out Hutt's Wikipedia to see if he qualified for both. He did qualify for both. He won Montreal, that's right. 3 0 probe. What a god. It's not easy. I was sitting there thinking, he qualified for one WCS, right? And this whole time it was two of them. A little bit of selective amnesia around Hut. I guess so. Maybe it's because yeah. I Maybe went to Valencia and saw him there and didn't go to Montreal and didn't see him there. I actually have a that could be really it. horrible memory. Especially the short to midterm memory. My long term memory is okay. Short to midterm though. Like I don't remember two weeks ago very well, and I definitely don't remember three months ago very well. It's just too much StarCraft. How can you remember it all? There is a ton of it, but I feel like I'm very, like I, I have a pretty vivid memory of like a lot of the ACLs from back in the day, like in 2012 and that sort of thing. I remember the land where I met you in Adelaide. Yeah, I remember that. I remember you, uh, we had, we had close spawns Metalopolis and I was playing Zerg and you were a Terran and you attacked me with some Hellions and I lost. And then we played on Zelnaga cabins and you did the same thing and I lost again and that was how we met each other pretty great yep you're welcome thanks uh, I, you, you asserted your dominance over me early and it's been that way ever since a little bunker play here from Hutt and it's uh, more cute than anything I don't know if it's going to finish up here the, the Reaper is actually doing a great job at thinning out these lings though Yes, doing all right. Doing all right. Uh, I, I've, I've just been trying to think, like, is is the bunker worth it? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it is. I mean, he's lost the SCV. May, maybe he was just doing it to throw Satsu off. Maybe force him to make a, a few extra okay. lings. But he's only made six. So it's totally fine. And that's an opportunity cost, having 100 minerals at that point of the game up in a bunker that's not doing anything so yeah it's a bit of a waste uh i mean the bunker thing has been utilized a lot by, by i feel like a, a lot of high level terrans lately but they just dropped the bunker and and just sort of hoping for the best with that reaper third cc going down here for hut as well this guy is actually playing oh, oh apart wow. from getting creeper surrounded and killed i'm saying he's playing almost exactly like ty going for a pretty fast third cc and going for that bunker rush with a single reaper while getting hellions back at home it just seems very TY-ish. And Hutt is the guy that I remember at the uh, Valencia qualifiers at, uh, at IM Sydney. He did go over 100, uh, 100 SCVs versus, I think it was versus NXZ. Oh, yeah. And he actually, he actually like, I remember he tweeted, shout out to TY <laughs> when he did it as well. <laughs> so, he's a, a meme in a dream of this kid. Yeah, there was this Melbourne land as well where he, he did something similar, I believe, in one of the games. Uh, I think it was Hutt. I might be misremembering, but... I I think we got up to like 115 SCVs at one point. And nice. then there, there just wasn't any army. It's pretty amazing. Well, he's got solid mechanics. I'll give him that. Very, very good at continuously producing work. It's an important skill to have. These links are in for a rough time. Or are they? Yeah, Look or at that they? spread. They scatter so quickly. Nice. That was super nice. Satu's got some quick fingers. Uh, I, I do like the like some of the small things I was talking about before with Hutt watching his games and Seether as well is the excellent sim city that they create around the thirds but it, it's even more small things just looking at the way that they rally their units to other units and just use that to get them out really efficiently keep this pressure going um, even picking up a couple drones there is really nice. Very questionable decision to, to main art them between the third and the, the natural, but 
Coming up with the, the Raven, this is an attack that you don't see all that much, but I do like it. Very nice in being able to clean up some of this creep. It's actually a little old school here, I feel, um, just to go for that Raven with the Hellions. You know, you don't have to use scans, but it's utilized to get rid of creep, and also the Raven can stand and fight sometimes as well to drop those auto turrets when the energy gets a little higher, like could potentially catch this queen and kill it. Exactly that. There you yeah. go. Yeah, it reminds me of MVP style back in the day. I was thinking about Wings of Liberty here, but Raven back Hellion 3cc. Yeah. yeah. Old That's school. Right, that MVP guy, he used to win everything. Yeah, he was pretty good at StarCraft. He was all right. I was, I was talking about, uh, like, or actually looking at old GSL VODs when they when they um, release them all for free. You can actually watch all of, like, the first couple seasons of GSL for free on YouTube now. And, uh, boy, you look at all the the eight plus years that we've had of gorgeous StarCraft 2, especially the current state of the game, and then you go back and you watch those VODs. It's, uh, it's pretty painful. I remember thinking how amazing it was back when I first watched it, how good everyone was, you know, in GSL. Yeah. Um, I can imagine exactly how painful it would be. <laughs> This is the average career GM would have such a good time in the Code A, Code S days uh, from six, seven years ago. Mm. The average level of the StarCraft community has risen so much in that time. Yeah. Send one of these guys back in time and they'll uh, they'll do quite well with that to old, to old GSL. But this push from HUD is doing very, very nicely here. Uh, even without medevac support, these Marines are still standing and fighting here against the Zerg army. Oops, some splash damage helping out the Zerg there. But the Raven's still alive, the tanks are still alive. Uh, Satu's got some Banelings out, took a little bit of damage, but the most important thing is that he kept his hatcheries up and his drone count is still quite healthy. He lost a lot of his army, but so did Hut. And without, like I mentioned, there's no medevac. So without those, you really can't press the issue. Stims do hurt Hut quite a bit. Yeah, the medevacs are now out though. Yeah, he could look to do another push on the ground or he could start to do some drops. Yeah, it's... I mean, either would be fine. And in typical Hut and Australian Terran fashion, if you've got combat shields. So there we go. Insano is now pointing that uh, they have now started. So they'll be done. Not in time for this push, but the next one. So I, I think at, at this point, Hut just wants to make sure that the creep doesn't move too far forward. He is pushing. And uh, the slow Banelings, they won't be too much of a threat. Great moves here, cleaning up this creep. It's so important for Terran to just be patient, not to go too deep on creep with your army to get surrounded and flanked by a good Zerg. And Satu is a good Zerg, so he would punish an overextension like that. Hut is just doing a great job of just slowly but surely chipping away that creep. The Raven's still alive, still being utilized here for that detection. And Hut is getting drilling claws here, so he's going to start getting into Widow Mine production for late game. Satu, however, going to take the sky. Spy going down with his 2 2s going up in a Ling Bane Muta. Satu's been doing that style. It's been pretty popular lately for Europe, some European Zergs where they actually don't make any Hydralisks. They just go straight into mass Ling Bane. So you end up having a great, huge swarm of a ground army. But it does make Medivac play a little bit stronger, generally. You know, they can't really be punished. Yeah, it certainly does. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. And even now with the uh, Drilling Claws, and the new Widow Mine, or the old Widow Mine, whatever you want to think about it, um, combined with the Ravens and the tanks, I, I think that Hydra's, especially considering that they've had like a 10% DPS nerf, they would be the wrong choice. Uh, I do prefer to see more like Mutaling Bane, or even even just Massling Bane to try and defend in some of these positions. Uh, I'm not sure if is oh. going to have such a great time at defending this base, but here he goes. He's pulling the trigger and moving forward. That is a lot of uh, banelings, but great spread yeah. on these marines by Hut. He just cleans everything up. He's 65 supply up right now. Yeah, that trade was actually amazing for Hut. It looked closer the than mana was. Mules. Those mules are not for repairing. That's manners right there. That's the yeah, get absolutely. out of this game, mules. Stay. And he is... I mean, we were talking about you asserting your dominance over me early in our relationship as friends. But uh, Hut is asserting right dominance here for SYF and downfalls uh, Ava here. I, yeah, dominance has well and truly been asserted as the yeah. mules are just kind of... <laughs> they're, they're part of the party now. 
And they're going to go and have a look at that fourth. The third has been sniped. There's some action over at a different third base as well. I think that might have been Marine or a, a Widow Mine or, or something. Muters, you can take that tank. Hut don't care. He's, he's almost maxed out. He's had some great trades. But 194 yeah, supply, 10 and a half minutes. GG. When you, when you have 60 Marines, you don't really care about losing a couple tanks there. Raven goes down, drops an auto turret though. I mean, shaving into this middle's count. Hut, hut. You know, Satu is just trying to hold on. He doesn't want to tap out. He wants to try and, you know, get a big miracle engagement. Maybe um, catch like an overextension from Hut or a massive mistake. But this is Hut. We're talking about mistakes are few and far between. And he gets the victory. It was inevitable at that point. But you now we're casters and we have to keep talking about the video game. So Satu does get uh, beaten in the end there, unfortunately. Or well, fortunately for SYF fans and Hut fans, as they are now on match point. And who's the next the next warrior here? It's gonna be Crimbo. Crimson. Crimson up against mm. Rise. Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben, Ben Bong. Excited for this one. Yeah, so I have a ZVP, and that'll be on Lost and Found. Oh, knowing Rise, it, it could be anything. Like it'll be very, very interesting to see what he does, considering the, the danger of going for a risky build. Game four, you're on match point. You probably want to show either the most solid macro play that you've got or the most crazy cheese that your opponent's not going to expect. It's really, really polar when you're put into this position in a tournament. Um, so I'm sure that downfall would have uh, prepared something for this possibility. Um, we're just going to have to see what it is. I really do think they have to get crazy here. If they try and play regular against Crimson, I think it might not go well for him. Mm, but I think I think you could be right. But well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I want to see. I don't know. Maybe something like Blink DTs. You know, like mm, proxy gates. Maybe. Who knows? Just trying to think about some of these uh these Protosses, like your Lunaths rises. Do actually get a little crazy. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going for the beard stroke. I'm con in in contemplation here. The contemplated beard stroke. <laughs> uh, I'd love to have some interviews with these players or something, or, or just be able to get into their head and and know what's going through their mind at at times like these after the games. Do you uh, know what? Actually, I would. It's going to be, it would be really, really tough to organize, but I think that that would make this show really special. Um, I mean, it's already quite special. This is a very good, very good show, very well produced. But um, I would love an interview with both the players before the game starts. Oh, the smack talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, with it. the winner get them on the, Get them on call. <laughs> I think that would really, because yeah. everyone on the scene, we're, we're, we all know each other very, very well. And there is, so much banter that a lot of people that aren't involved in the scene they get that miss out on, and you just get to be a part of it. You think that Hut would be gentle to Satu in a voice call before the game starts? Mm -mm. Absolutely not. You think yours wouldn't have talked smack on Seether before their game, and then ended up winning in the end? Do you know how much tastier a win is when you smack talk before you do it? You try it sometimes out there in chat, but be sensible. Don't be idiots. Try going for the highbrow smack talk. Going for your mother jokes isn't always a sure thing. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, but it, it's a sometimes thing. It's a tried and true format, but it is, yeah. you know, it's, it's sometimes food. One of the awesome things about this tournament, um, going back to what you were talking about, is the community aspect of it and how active even the chat is. And there's such a great vibe in the chat around this stream that it makes it that much more enjoyable. I mean, you see all the personality coming out, so um, th this is a shout-out for everyone in chat. You keep yeah. doing you. Uh, keep it up. It's awesome. And that's not the passive-aggressive you do you. We, like, death actually literally means just keep doing what you're doing. Oh, yeah. In the top right, disappointingly not in Crimson, but still representing SYF, it is Crimbo. And down here in the bottom left, in the purple, he's got to do it to keep Team Downfall in the game. This is Rise. 
and see what the plan is here. Uh, I mean, at the moment, it looks like a cannon rush. Oh, no, it's a gateway. Never mind. Just a very, very early probe trying to delay that hatchery, I guess. Okay. Oh, it's, it's not going to get there in time. No. Nope. If Crimson. he went for the 17 hatch, it would have been it would have been there in time. But Crimson's played knifey spoony before. The Very smart. Hatch. Yeah. The 16 hatch was definitely the right choice. So Rai's going for the assimilator, the gas. He's got the gateway started. Is looking like it, we're going to see a nexus at, at the very least. So it's not too crazy yet. But Protoss has a whole bag of tricks up their sleeve. Um, lots of exciting units. You, you've got things like Dark Templar, Warp Prism, Archon Drops, Disruptors, Tempest, Oracles. Um, and Zerg have a lot of very powerful ways to scout what the Protoss are doing. And if there's one thing that Crimson's excellent at, it's adapting to his opponent's play. So do expect to see uh, Crimson scout very well. And if Rise does go crazy, Crimson will have something prepared for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, last week, SYF faced the Vietnamese All-Stars and Crimson faced QB, who we saw earlier, and read a giant eight-gate all-in like the back of his hand and, and reacted to it beautifully. Just started making roaches, hit him at the right time, and I mean, Yubi managed to just get deflected completely. Like he did drone damage, but Crimson just, there was no way he was gonna lose the fight. He saw the all in, he read him correctly. And just like you mentioned, he's just so good at reading his opponent and reacting to it. So we've got the link speed coming out from Crimson. He's maintaining a bit of map control or just a bit of map presence, being able to scout any adepts coming his way. Couple lings look like they're moving around, maybe to the third. Just um, gonna keep tabs on what Rise is doing. And Twilight Council's almost done, so then we can start to see the first deviation. We're gonna see a Dark Shrine or a Link, a Depth upgrade. Let's see, nothing started yet. Link would be weird. You don't really see that in this matchup too much in ED anymore. No. It's usually charged into like Templar archives and that sort of thing, but uh, oh, it does look kind of moment. DTS. Yeah, it yeah. does, doesn't it? Archon drops, eh? It's yeah, solid. Ready. It's solid, a yeah. meta build for a reason. Right and true. It's one of those old school things, kind of like the 2 1 1, where people used to just have to deal with it so many games in a row that they used to have the answer. But then they forget it exists. Because people don't do it enough. That's an extra couple of gateways going down here in part of the wall. Certainly is being very careful here against a particular uh, potential run by, I guess. That is one of the ugliest walls I've ever seen, though. I mean, it's got a lot it's, of things going for it. It's yeah. just hideous to look at. This, this wall is a bit of a butterface. Yeah. Bit of a bit of a Nicki Minaj. Shots fired. Wow. Damn. Jeez, that was a uh, savage. I'm sure she's watching right now as well. It's just oh, uh, yeah. it's, it makes it extra savage. I know for a fact that that uh, Nikki. You know, I, I call her Nikki because uh, you know we're just we're close on like that. first name basis. Nickname yeah, exactly. basis. Yep. Um, I know that she watches A and Z Pro League every day. She gets up at 4 a.m. for it. So. On tour. Sorry, Nikki. I don't. I don't follow what Death's saying. I actually think that you're quite gorgeous. You're a natural beauty. I mean, I've never seen you without a thousand pounds of makeup on, but I'm sure underneath it, you're uh, you're a natural beauty. <laughs> His DT splitting up is a little questionable, though. I think that uh, you know it's half, hard to make an archon when there's three together here. You know, I mean, you can make an archon, but archons plural is what I mean. One and a half archons. It's like two and a half men. Oh, here we go. Four crawler going down. The Overseer is going to morph in pretty quickly. So the DTs are just going to kind of mosey on out of there. Get picked up by the Warp Prism. Overseer getting into the main as well. So this is what I was saying. Grimson, he scouts at the perfect time. Mm -hmm. uh, you more gateways going down. It does look like the blink follow up uh, on two bases is the answer. So that's a lot of gateways. Wise might just go all in. I mean, 
does he plan to take a third behind this? Or is he just going to straight up go for it? Big blink immortal all in? God damn. Back of an Archon drop. I mean, that is a lot of production for two bases. You could be right here. Uh, Crimson is making a bunch of... Uh, he's making Banely Nest back at home and a bunch of links. So he's reading like he's going to get aggressed. Like it's on the way. Ling Bane's not bad against Stalkers. You get enough of them, they can just surround and destroy everything. And once the Archons are dealt with, it's actually kind of easy picking for these Lings and Banes actually to get the uh, to get the job done. Yeah, uh, Rise has very good Blink Stalker Micro, so he might be able to keep trading. And at the moment, they're on fairly equal economies and he's got a bit of a choke point that he can use he's got some decent aoe with the archons couple archons there the immortals in the back would be able to tank a lot of shots as well mm. crimson oh he's going to be able to find one of the archons straight away was not in range of the war prison for the pickup there the immortals are falling rise he's down in the army supply so the trade so far has not been too great yeah, yeah, as these Archons go down, the links get stronger and stronger here. He got rid of the, uh, the Immortals, soak up a lot of damage as well. Lost one of them there to the Bane Links. Uh, I think this, as long as Crimson's patient here, he can hold on. Um, Ryze is trying to get on creep, and every time he is, he's punished here by Crimson's army. Crimson getting into that. He's feeling very confident now, going for the War Prism, engaging off creep with these Roaches and Ravagers, killing some more Stalkers. The Stalkers are doing bonus damage to those Roaches. Oh, oh my the god. Bane the connection. Yeah, there's so many stalkers going down. Rise just not able to find quite good enough trades. It looks like Crimson will be able to hold, but uh, he's making he's making a lot of links. So if he can get uh, a big enough link count, especially with 26 in production, mm. with a couple more ravages, he should be able to find a hold here. Rise will eventually start to mine out his main as well. So there's a bit of a time limit on how effective this attack can be some of those patches getting quite low yeah uh, rise is really using the map to his advantage here creating a bit of a choke point oh crimson easy to easy tiger spiraling down a few of his bane links a uh, little bit of miscontrol there but i gotta say like even though that miscontrol aside this is just another game where crimson's just reading his opponent so well that all he has to do is just keep doing what he's doing just try not to throw his army away and he should be just fine his opponent is all in, and he is not. I mean, he's only up a few workers, but yeah, he's, the he's got three hatcheries. There's the wrap. He can blink to get out of that wrap around, though. There he goes. But Crimson's feeling like he can get that. Whoa. <laughs> that engagement on the high ground. I think that would be an overextension, though. Really wants that warp prism. Crimson's read this very, very nicely. Still continuing to make some more banes, getting some more lings, a couple of ravages here. The roach count's fairly low, which is kind of good because they're not very effective against playing stalkers and uh here comes another wraparound just siphoning off a couple of those wounded stalkers thinning out that count and now rise is finding it very difficult to warp in a whole bunch of units and failings will get some connections potentially oh, oh crimson might have actually overextended all of the lings are down Can yeah do i mean going it? this far up creep is just so dangerous for him uh, he does have Roach speed, but, uh, you know, and, and the Ravagers are pretty speedy as well, but Blink Stalkers are speedier and they have that range. So every time he goes far like that and he doesn't completely mop up these Stalkers, he does get punished on that punished on that retreat. It really is mainly up to the Biles and the Lings to get it done. These Banelings haven't been super effective for him, but they have speed now, so they're going to be a little bit stronger. And they're rolling on in. Rise, yeah, though, you talk about his Blink control, it's pretty solid. He's a blink machine. It's super frustrating for the Zerg player, especially with that, that choke. He's just been fighting there for so long. Uh, if he'd been able, to, been able to get rid of those rocks, it might have looked quite a bit different. Or even some corrosive biles. Just get rid of those rocks at some point. Rise is starting to get such a big ball of stalkers that he wants to get rid of the rock and start using the bigger choke point. Bainling's getting, again, some nice connections, but now the army supply differential is getting wider and wider, man. Yeah. Rise, he's up 16 army supply. That's a big lead right now. He's starting to crack through the defenses of Crimson here. Crimson losing some ground, and once he's lost the ground, it will snowball, and we will be seeing a Rise victory, which will take us to the ace match. If that could happen right here, right now, Rise 
Smells victory, smells blood in the water. He comes in for a big blink, but it, oh, I look like he's gonna lose three or four stalkers there. Yeah, bit of spaghetti on the keyboard. Uh, failings. Sweaty hands. Doing too much, but a couple more rolling through. Rise is up in the supply. He blinks. He's got it. That's the victory blink. He thinks That's he's got it. Blink. No, he yeah. has got it, man. He's broken through. And he's not settling with the third base. He's going for the throat here. Going very deep on that creep here. Even the drones being pulled, but drones don't do too great against the Blink Stalkers, Maynard. Grimson plummeting in supply. His, uh, his win streaks, his stats, his Pro League stats are, uh, are going to be falling down here, I think. Rise, 78 yeah. supply, 30 supply for Crimbo. And he's just going to have to do it. He's going to have to collect himself, type out the GG. Rise would be super pumped with that result, and for good reason, because he Dude. keeps downfall in the game, and they're going to an ace match. An ace match against SYF? Holy hell. This is the world we live in. I don't think anyone's managed to do this to SYF that I can remember. So this is really, really sick. I think the only time SYF was in an ace match was the grand finals of season two. Yeah, so... Right? I'm trying to cast my mind back. Yeah, so season two full results. I've actually got a sheet open because my wonderful and uh, good friend Zeph sent them to me. So we'll actually have a look at that. Um, yep. No, you're right. It went to the ace match in the grand final. Demi see the SYF on backwater. And SYF ended up getting the ace match victory. On your Okay. Two okay. Two victory. So quite an awesome cast tonight. I mean, uh, Quite a, a bit longer than last week. So getting the value for money is the chat, is the teams, is the viewers. Right. And so we're not we're by the hour, guys. We're ace, a lump sum caster, casting. Yeah, team, so. not, not by the hour. Not hourly. Um, ace match. You'd have to say either Seether or Hut. My money would actually be on Hut to come out as the ace here for SYF. What do you think? I I agree. I think Hut's going to come down. He's got that fire in his belly. He's cocky. He's and and for good reason. Mm. He's really, really, really damn good. And I don't See think he's probably in a Dota game that. right now. He probably is, which would be weird because mm. he uninstalled it earlier. But um, he reinstalled yeah. it pretty quick. Uh, you know, let's just pretend he's got MBN or something. Yeah. And for downfall, I think we'll see yours. I think yours would be the strongest contender. Um, so. We get another TVZ to round out the night. That's going to be awesome. Oh, I would love Hut versus yours. Oh, God. That would be amazing. Fingers crossed. And what's, our, what's our map for the ace match? It's uh, Parasite. Parasite. So that's actually cool. a very decent Zerg map. If, it's a um, fantastic Zerg map. Yeah. So wouldn't be surprised to see yours come out here for downfall, especially considering his, his incredible performance versus Cedar. And they see that did get uh, he was a bit of a cheeky lad making battle cruises, but mm. um, certainly played a solid. Uh, the battle cruises cease to be a factor when you get to the you know thirty odd minute mark. The battle cruises were pretty cool. I want to see more. <laughs> well, you know what the wonderful thing is about wanting to see things in ladder games or in tournament games mm. is that StarCraft Two is free to play. You can download it right now if you don't already have it. And you can play your own ladder games and do whatever you want in your own games. Quite literally. I remember there, really? there was one game recently I, I played with uh, mass Viking drops. And just seeing 200 supply of Vikings pop out of boosting medivacs was, uh, was pretty amazing. And awesome. we have now got confirmation from production that uh, our prediction was correct. It will be yours versus Hut for the Hell ace yeah. match. So that's going to be sick. sick. I am keen. I'm a keen bean. Oh, boy. Chat, tell your friends. Tell the world. Get in here and enjoy this stuff. I know that uh, we've got a pretty big tournament on later with Home Story Cup. KSL is live for you Brood War fans, but don't fret. The StarCraft 2 memes are continuing here for ANZ Pro League. Oh, man. I'm excited. It's actually only 20-odd minutes until Home Story Cup, so yours 
Yours and Hutt better hurry up. <laughs> Get their hustle on. <laughs> All right, so lobby is now being created. We'll get the players in here and we'll get things going, get it underway as quickly as we can. Uh, make sure you put your predictions in chat. Who do you think is going to win? Will it be Hut able to take out yours and secure the victory for SYF, continue SYF's undefeated streak? Or will Downfall and yours finally uh, be able to upset SYF and... Put another win on the board for their team. I think if Down will fall, win this series, I'll cease predicting things in, for the rest of this uh, season of Pro League because I just feel like I've just constantly been wrong. I mean, we were right about the ace match, but w whenever uh, that, I think that... I don't need a rocket surgeon to be able to figure this one out. A rocket surgeon? Yeah, or a brain scientist. A heart scientist, yeah. Mm. I'm Kane, man. Let's start the games. I think we might see Hutt do the same build this time as well because Kelly and Raven, like what he did against Satu, is going to be super effective at clearing up the creep on Parasite. And Parasite's like a pretty long map, so 